This video is going to use a supply and demand diagram to show the impact of a government using a subsidy as a part of a protectionist policy. If you don't know how supply demand equilibrium, uh, excess demand or business revenue work, you should watch the videos on those topics. There's also a video on increase in supply which is going to be important for this video. A subsidy is a payment made by a government to a local industry to help them pr to produce more products. We're going to look at the effect of a subsidy in this example here. The product that is being sold has a price of P1. This is below the domestic equilibrium price because there are overseas producers who are willing to produce this product at a lower price. They're willing to produce at P1. If domestic producers charge the equilibrium price, then no, they wouldn't be able to sell any products because people could buy the product cheaper from overseas. Because the price is so low, the domestic producers won't want to produce a lot of it. They're not going to make a lot of profit on each unit that they sell. So they will only want to supply from zero to Q1. This will lead to an excess demand. Because this price is so low, consumers will want to get from zero to Q2 of this product. So that is the amount of demand, and from 0 to Q1 is the amount of supply. The excess demand for this product is Q1 to Q2, and that will be made up in imports. With domestic producers only producing Q1 at this price level, the amount of revenue which they will receive is this area here, A. The overseas producers will receive this area here, which is B. The payment of a subsidy by the government will lead to an increase in supply. And we'll increase supply here from S to S2. The domestic business has taken the cash subsidy which they've received and used it to produce more products and that has led to a shift in their supply curve from S to S2. Now at that price level the domestic businesses are willing to produce more products and we'll put this new level Q3. So previously the domestic production was from 0 to Q1 domestic production is now from 0 to Q3 Imports used to be the excess demand of Q1 to Q2, but with the new supply curve, the excess demand has fallen to Q3 to Q2. So this is the new level of imports. Now the aim of this subsidy was to assist those domestic producers, and we can see that the, the subsidy has been able to do that. We have a new area here, C. Previous to the subsidy being given, domestic producers made revenue equal to the area A. The overseas producers, they were able to make the revenue of B plus C. But in giving this subsidy, the supply curve has moved from S to S2, and as a result, domestic producers are now able to produce a lot more, and their revenue increases from A to A plus B. The importing companies, their revenue has increased from B plus C just to C. So with the aim of this to help domestic producers, this has occurred because the area B is now revenue that is received by the domestic producers. If you compare this to a tariff, and there is a video which shows a, a, the effect of a tariff, there's some advantages of this, of this subsidy. Under a tariff, we end up with a price increase and less products being demanded. Under a subsidy, however, prices don't rise and consumers still have the same amount of products that they are able to purchase.